I don't know how you can create design for the world if the people creating it don't look like the world. Oh, design is like, is so many things. It's not like one thing. It's not even a, it's a way of thinking. It's a way of executing. It's a way of how you approach things. I mean, when you see something that's well-designed, you're like drawn to it. You don't even know what it's about. I don't even know like what it is, but I'm just like, ooh, that looks greater. That is so well done. I don't even know like if there's a specific like definition it is just something that you see and feel and you know that it's good. I am born and raised in U City, U City girl. Um, I went to U City Public Schools and I was always into art. But in my family, and even at that time, graphic design was not a thing. It was just sort of an idea of like, oh, I love magazines. I like the way that things are laid out and I like images and you know type. So when I went through school, I always took art classes, sucked at science and math, <laughs> and didn't really know what I wanted to do, but I was hoping it could be in that. So I had a art teacher, she wasn't a professor, Carol Ray, she was my art teacher. And she told me about graphic design. And I was like, oh, this is really interesting. I went to school and you had to take, I think four semesters, and then you had a portfolio review. And so I'm all, I'm working really hard. I'm working jobs because I didn't have all the money to pay for the supplies. And um, I went through portfolio review and this professor, Dick Varney, I remember him, I didn't pass. And he told me I wasn't prepared to go on and I didn't really have what it, I needed, but like I could come back and go through the program again. And I was devastated because I was just like, so I'm not good enough. And at that point, too, I was the only black kid in the whole department. And I don't really think it struck me as much, except for I looked around and I didn't really see anybody that looked like me. Um, but it didn't kind of strike me as like a reason. And it's not even really a reason. It's just that I didn't have the background. I didn't have any of the knowledge. I didn't have the resources. So I thought about taking those courses again. And at some point, I met this one professor in the journalism school. And she said, well, we have a, ma a magazine journalism program. And I thought, well, maybe I could try that. And she said, oh, we do classes with designers. So you can actually kind of go that track. So I went through and I finished and then I went back and I took some more design classes because I still wanted to be really good at it. One of the things that really made um, a difference to me was that I had this teacher that was giving me this information about design. A lot of kids don't have that. But what you see is there's a lot of students, especially black students, that are great at drawing. They're great at like doing graffiti or other kinds of things. No one has ever showed them how to take that and make it into design. Their thought is there. They don't know how to do it. So what they do is if they go to college, they go to one of the community colleges or they go to a school here, a lot of times what I notice is that they're behind a little bit. Not every student, and I'm not trying to generalize, I'm just saying that what I notice in the education for a lot of the students that are a minority is that they don't have the exposure. When you look at the world, if I look at St. Louis, almost all of the premier design firms are owned by white men. It's just different. And I love them all, you know. I love the people who uh, run these agencies. And I know that when I've talked to them or when I've gone to AIGA National and that's been a product project that has come up, like how to make this better, how do we increase the numbers? Because it's a national problem. It's a national problem, but the people that I know that run these agencies, they want diversity too. You know, you're gonna sell to someone, you should maybe have someone that's on that Mac or behind that camera that looks like them because there's little nuances that you miss if you don't know. So when I graduated, my first job was at UMSL, which is funny because that's where I work now. Um, but I worked for this woman and her name was Sandy Morris. And she is one of the most underrated, fantastic designers I had ever met. I 
go for this interview. I meet with this guy, Mark, and he's like, okay, we'd like to hire you, but I want you to meet who will be your supervisor. And Sandy walks in and it's a black woman. And I was like, I mean, seriously, like awestruck. Like I'd never met anybody before. And I didn't even see any in like images of other designers in other cities. It was just like, wow. My dad owned his own business the whole time I was growing up. Actually, it was just a few blocks from here in North City. It was a grocery and liquor store convenience. It was the only one because everything around there was blighted. So it was in this food desert. So people would come there and get their food and their liquor. <laughs> and this was before lottery tickets. But he was an entrepreneur always. So when I was a few years into working, I just needed something different. So I quit my job, which was really stupid because I didn't have a job. But I started, I had like a little bit of money from doing some side work and I started my own business. So I did that for 17 years. And I would compete against people on projects and I was the only one that was black. And I had like certification for the state of Missouri, of, I still have it, MBE, WBE. For a while, I was the only black woman in the state of Missouri in the creative um, world that had that certification. So, you know, I had people who asked me to be sort of almost a pass through, or I would be kind of a person that would be like that 10 or 15 percent. And I don't mind that, because I think you should have that encouragement of hiring minority. But what I didn't want was for them to think that I couldn't do the work. Like, just because you don't have a seat at the table doesn't mean you can't do the work. You just haven't been given the opportunity. I will say that one of the biggest things for me as a woman of color in this industry is connections and networking. I will tell young people all day long, you need to network because no one's gonna know you're out there unless you put yourself out there. And you know, you can't be afraid of that. You also can't be angry about it. Follow your passion. And if you don't know what that is, try and figure it out.